Thanks, guys, for that first carrier update this morning. It's time now to welcome our Air Cargo Editor, Eric Coolish, to the show for today's top story of the morning. Eric, thank you for joining us. Good morning, Kaylee. How are you? Good. It's great to see you on a Wednesday shaking things up a little bit. Let's dig into a story that we kind of talked about yesterday. Alpine Air getting some business now from FedEx, UPS, and now getting their foot in the door with DHL, too. Yeah, um, you know, it's. Um, it, I like to sometimes write about the smaller companies in the air cargo market, and, you know, we all see the big FedEx and UPS jets at the major airports, but, you know, less visible or known to people is this uh, kind of subculture or subset of contract carriers that they operate to fill in the gaps in their network and, you know, to reach rural and smaller communities. So one of these is a company called Alpine Air Express, and it's one of the larger regional uh, air carriers in the U.S. And and they're kind of up and growing. They have a private equity company bought them a few years ago, so they've got some financial muscle and they just bought a small company based out of uh, Omaha called Suburban Air Freight. And interestingly, they don't really operate in that area. They operate out of Atlanta, basically to the southeast or uh, Florida Gulf Coast. And a lot of their business is for DHL Express, uh, kind of being a feeder service for them. So Alpine Air will, will pick up DHL Express now as, as a customer as well. And... You know, they've got some growth ambitions. They want to kind of fill in that gap between the southeast and where they operate in, primarily in the in the in the western states. Their Alpine is in the Dakotas, Colorado, Idaho, California, Wyoming, in that area. And so over time through acquisitions or or organic growth, uh, they want to increase. And, and they use these smaller turboprop planes, you know, two engine turboprops, the Beechcraft 1900. Um, Suburban's got some similar planes and I think Alpine's fleet's about 50 aircraft and Suburban has about 10. So it's just an interesting story. And, and one other interesting thing is they also are, uh, you know, we talk about aircraft conversions all the time and we think of jets, but in this case, they bought 25 of these Beechcraft 1900s from another company a couple of years ago, and they're converting them themselves into, you know, propeller driven freighters. So, so the modifications are a little different, um, but uh, it's kind of a cool story. Eric, I usually don't get to chat with you, so excited about this one. Um, hey, what's going good on? to see you. Good to see you, too. I usually I just get to watch, so great to be here with you. Um, when we're looking at WestJet, what's this latest service going on with this new freighter service that they have? Well, you know, kind of uh, along the same theme of, you know, airlines that aren't in the main public consciousness, um, not one of the mainline carriers, uh, WestJet is uh, kind of the number two carrier in Canada after Air Canada. They're a uh, you know passenger airline uh, based in Calgary, and they've you know like several other airlines, you know they carry cargo in their belly. But in the last year, they've made a decision to really double down on cargo and decide to start a freighter fleet. So there's they launched uh, or made plans to convert a, a lease. Uh, four 737-800 narrow-body jets and convert them to freighters. And so they just received from the conversion house of a Boeing, uh, a Boeing company, um, they just received their first freighter, and then they'll get another one soon, and they plan to launch that service in midsummer, maybe by June. And, you know, but a lot of things are going on over there. They just got a new cargo chief, uh, Kristen De Bruyne. She came over from Qatar Airways, which is, you know, the largest air cargo carrier in the world, if you're not including FedEx and UPS. And before that, she was at Emirates. So she has a lot of experience. And, um, you know, they've got some new technology, new cargo management systems. So they're really ramping up for this uh, freight experience and where they, you know, intend to mostly focus on e-commerce or kind of that express delivery within Canada, at least for starters, and they'll ultimately have four aircraft.
Eric, you mentioned that WestJet is primarily a passenger airline now with this kind of robust build out of their cargo sector. And I've got to wonder, are they struggling with any of the problems that the other passenger airlines here in the U.S. are struggling with? We've got a ton more flights coming online, not enough people to service them, not enough pilots, not enough gate agents, ramp agents, etc. Are they struggling with that? And is adding this cargo I guess kind of just increase not only for WestJet but for these other companies as well contributing to that um, you know it's an interesting question I, I don't think they're having the same problem at least not yet um, I think they've got the opposite problem in Canada if you'll recall they, they're almost like you know nine months to a year behind the US in their airline industry recovery because Canada didn't open up its borders in the same way. And so there were all these um, quarantine restrictions for travelers after they arrived internationally and, you know, testing requirements. And so while the U.S. carriers last year, this time and into the summer were, had, you know, some pretty good bounce back um, closer to 2019 levels and then we had had some, you know, tail off when the, when the Delta variant came. Canada was a whole different story, and they were complaining with the government, the airlines there, about you're being too strict, you're really hurting the industry. So it's kind of now that Canada's lifted the, the restrictions that they're kind of, you know, finally beginning to come into their own. Air Canada's had 100,000 passengers the other day, which is a, a first since 2019. So yeah, they're just trying to build up right now and, and glad to, to be kind of flying for, you know, uh, without those restrictions. So maybe they'll run into those problems, but I haven't heard about it yet. And Eric, it seems like the supply chain is just moving in all different directions. We see what's going on with trucking, what's not really happening. The same thing is not really happening, I should say, with um, ocean and maritime. When you're looking at air cargo, what does that runway look like for growth as we continue to see expansions and conversions in that space? Well, I mean, the, 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 uh, the growth for air cargoes, you know, the prospects are very good, especially this year and next year, and probably, you know, well down the road, uh, as a lot of analysts have suggested. But, you know, this year, the, even though there might be some tail off in, you know, consumer demand with inflation and so forth, and a lot of that remains to be seen. There's just, as you said, so many supply chain disruptions and so much inventory buildup that still remains to be taken and the port congestion problems and now the all the COVID restrictions, the, the lockdowns in Shanghai that are bottling up a lot of the ocean cargo. You know, the expectation is that, you know, there's just going to be ongoing extreme demand for air transport and freighters. And when these lockdowns in China lift and the air and more freighters can get into the airports, they're going to be overwhelmed or, or fully booked uh, for months to come. Eric, we're now just in the middle of earnings season. Companies are starting to report. Is there anyone from air cargo that you're either excited to see or that you're expecting big things out of when it comes to reporting Q1 earnings? Right. Uh, good question. And, uh, you know, as we talked about last week, Delta Airlines was the first to report and had a very uh, positive um, report, especially in it with air cargo, some record air cargo for the first quarter. I think it was close to $290 million. And so they've done very well. This week, we've got a bunch. Uh, probably the main one I'll be watching is United Airlines on Thursday or maybe late today and then their earnings call tomorrow. Um, and they are, they've kind of set the bar um, internationally, but especially among the U.S. carriers for air cargo. So Delta's done well, but United Airlines has done even better the last, uh, since the pandemic. So they've really figured out how to use their uh, passenger aircraft as cargo only jets and, and now just exclusively in, in passenger mode. But they are doing extremely well, so it will be interesting to see how they do. We also have Alaska, Air, American Airlines, Alaska Airlines, and Southwest reporting. I'll probably watch American closely as well. And Eric, before we let you go, what's going to be the next story that you're looking to push out on FreightWaves.com? Um, I'm looking at an interesting story um, about, you know, because of the capacity issues from Asia, and a lot of factories or companies and manufacturers in Mexico trying to get components and parts. And there's really not a lot of uh, freighter service from China 
to Mexico and oceans bottled up. So there's, you know, this service called Air Road, it's kind of a multimodal solution that forwarders are, are using and have used for several years, but it's become a little more prominent. Demand has picked up to fly into Los Angeles, Chicago, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, put it on an express uh, truck and goes right across the border. It's treated as an airship. And so it doesn't have to clear at the border. They go to an airport like in Mexico City and clear it there and drop it off. And and then these uh, components and so forth for these manufacturers get to the factories. And so it takes a couple days longer, but it's a lot cheaper than direct air freight. And it's a way to work around the lack of freighter capacity. Uh, I'm interested in that one, especially looking at uh, manufacturing. Eric, thanks so much for joining us this morning. All right, anytime, thanks.